Hello everyone and welcome to another exciting episode of Today with John and Helen. As the saying goes, in every guest there's a story. In every story there is a lesson. That's right John and on today's show we are diving into stories that inspire, stories that teach and uplift. Here on Plus TV Africa, DSTV channel 408 and Star Times channel 308 we will be bringing you more than just interviews we're bringing you moments that matter moments you know from the ordinary of to the extraordinary we've got a lineup that promises to leave you so enriched and entertained today sure and our first guest today is dr tui mebaodu a renowned public health expert here to discuss the recent cholera outbreak in lagos state you know helen they say an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And Dr. Mibaudu's expertise is timely as uh, we navigate this concern. I'm so happy I'm not the one calling this doctor's name this morning because <laughs> I would have just muttered it. Well, absolutely, John. <laughs> With the current worries surrounding the cholera outbreak, Dr. Mabewudu's <laughs> insight into prevention and management are invaluable. Thank God you. Yes. Thank God you won this. <laughs> it's actually Dr. Mebao. Mebao. And okay. uh, well, in, on, in our Me. second segment, Chizo Bamufuigbu dives into culture conversations with Amanda Iheme, an extraordinary figure in mental health advocacy and architectural photography. Amanda's international acclaim and dedication to nurturing the next generation of creatives makes this a conversation not to be missed. Not to be missed at, at all. And finally, we will be hosting our third guest, Emmanuel Ibukun Efuntayo, an expert in estate management who will be shedding light on understanding tenancy agreements. You know what they say, John? Good fences make good neighbors. Uh, Efuntayo will be here to ensure both landlords and tenants understand their rights and the responsibilities very very clearly so stay tuned as we bring you insightful discussions and a great time ahead right here on plus tv africa dstv 408 and star times 308 so whether it's laughter whether it's tears or profound insights you are after or looking for today with john and helen live is where you want to be because here every guest brings a treasure a treasure of experiences waiting to be shared. Yeah, so grab your favorite drink, settle in, and let's make this even today uh, <laughs> unforgettable together. Yeah. Stay tuned as we unfold the magic of human stories right here on Plus TV Africa. We'll be back. So our first guest today is none other than Dr. Tui Mibawadu, a distinguished public health expert and publisher of Health Nika. Dr. Mibawadu brings a wealth of knowledge and experience to our discussion today. Absolutely, John. Dr. Mibawadu earned his MBCHB degree from the University of Ife and specialized in public health at um, Uppsala University in Sweden. His extensive career spans 22 years with the Lagos State Government, where he played a pivotal role in public health initiatives. And beyond his remarkable tenure, Dr. Mibadu's commitment to health literacy is evident through his leadership at Medway and HealthNika.com, where he promotes vital health information and solutions. And today he joins us to shed a lot of light on the recent cholera outbreak in Lagos State and Nigeria as a whole, offering critical insights on how we can protect ourselves and our families during this um, challenging time. So let's dive into this important conversation with uh, Dr. Tui Mibawadu, dedicated to enhancing public health awareness and solutions. Dr. Mibawadu, you're welcome to the show. Good morning, and thank you for such a wonderful accolade. I've not been so praised <laughs> <laughs> in my life. So I would like to come to your today's show every time. <laughs> Perhaps I'll yeah. get this dose. I mean, we should have a regular segment for you because <laughs> health really is everything, right? Indeed. So, Indeed. doctor, just uh, like a uh, bolt out of the blue, like they say, cholera outbreak has hit us. Um, is this where we're supposed to be? Should, should we be, you know, caught unawares? Is it unawares? Are we prepared for it? What's, what's happening, really? Uh, well, uh, thank you, John. Um, 
it's actually a, a big, a huge disappointment that to 2024, we're still having outbreaks of cholera in a mega city like Lagos, also of Nigeria. Mm. Um, one thing about cholera is this: it's a mixture of many things. But the key thing is that you can get cholera whenever there's the presence of the jam, which is which we we'll talk about, and there's there's a, there's a breakdown in wash. Wash means water. Mm -hmm. Hygiene uh, and health, uh, water, sanitation, sanitation hygiene. Oh. That's wash. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whenever there's a breakdown in water, breakdown in sanitation, breakdown in hygiene, then and the jam is there, expect cholera. Um, at the point, at the that of of cholera break is bad government. Okay, because mm -hmm. what you need to do to keep cholera away is provide water mm -hmm. and health sanitation. And to shock you. Um, Nigeria actually is the uh, no, no, second capital hmm. in open defecation. Yeah. Um, every time you see people go look, look, go look around Lagos, I said this most small you see time. people Just dropping small. waste. Yeah. Apart from the household waste, the human waste hmm. on top of water and bridges. Okay. And then uh, let, uh, let me just cap that with this. Hmm. Out of the one um, 744 new governments in Nigeria, mm -hmm. in whole Nigeria, 774, 117 are free from open defecation. 117. There's none in Lagos. Okay. Wow. No single one in Lagos. Kano has about 18, Kasina 24, Jigawa 28, or there, but Lagos has none. That means that anywhere in Lagos, any local government, any corner, you see people defecating openly. No, when you say and when you free... defecate openly, Free, free defecation. What, what open do you mean? defecation. Open what I mean is that people go, you know, and drop their waste. Mm. I'm talking about human waste. Mm. Yeah. Openly. Yeah. You see them. There, there are no latrines. There are no toilets. There are nothing. You just people on the, on the bridge, by the roadside, yeah. defecating openly. When you defecate openly and really washes the thing, it, it, it goes into the, the water. Mm. And you drink the water, you get cholera. Okay. Sorry, doctor. I'll, I'll, I'll have to put a pause on that because we're going to build up to what you just said. And you probably expand a little more on it when we get there. Now, now um, Helen, I'm, I'm sure you have, uh, you, you want to start, start the process. Because quite frankly, I think we want to know what is the situation as we speak? What's the latest on the cholera outbreak in uh, Lagos State uh, and how serious is the situation right now? We've been hearing stories. Mm -hmm. So confirm what really is holding. I, I had experience, not that I had cholera, but I saw people. Mm -hmm. Uh, in a place we attended to some of them, uh, some died. So it's, it's not some story I'm hearing from television or mm. whatever, mm. reading news, newspaper, mm. but what I saw. I, right now, according to the state government, um, 20 local governments, you know, with cholera, 45 deaths, mm. um, you know, and how many 70 something com com confirmed cases, mm. you know. So but that's, that's low because first and foremost, you know the thing broke around uh, June 11th. Yeah. When we said that Lagos State diarrhea things the way of cholera. Mm. Before we know it, people were dying, and the only measures we've seen so far is that um, stop food vending in school, delay the opening of school, and then talk to people. That's mm -hmm. all the measures we've seen. Mm -hmm. yeah, maybe that's okay, Kay. but it's not sufficient. Mm -hmm. Um, because the campaign, thank God you are bringing it up on, your, your, on this, prop, on this impo very important show. The campaign is at the grassroots. The campaign is how to ensure uh, safe drinking water. The campaign is how to enhance your waste, uh, um, proper uh, disposal of your waste. waste. Mm. The campaign is how to ensure you wash hand and keep your food safe. Mm -hmm. Those are the key campaigns. And where do we need this campaign most? Um, when you see this kind of slum, mm -hmm. the kind of, you know, Lagos, like I used to say, is the one big dustbin with everybody trying to hide in one tiny I'm aspect of, of the clean part of the dustbin. It's a big dustbin. When you see this kind of waste, at the median of the road, you see waste being dropped there. Mm -hmm. When you're, okay, um, tell you what, um, yesterday I was on a boat trip from um, VI to all the way to Ekwe to some of those villages. Mm -hmm. It pitiable sight. Mm -hmm. Very pitiable side because as you walk on the road, you see people defecating everywhere. Wow. Okay. So, mm. so why won't you get cholera? cholera. Mm. And then um, the sad aspect of it is that the response is inadequate. Now, 
I had thought that at this point, government is going to deploy the cholera vaccine, which can actually mm -hmm. protect those children, mm -hmm. uh, actually the vulnerable group. But I tell you what, even WHO ran out of vaccines in, as at March. Now, they, they said they have 5 million. So why many of these come to Nigeria? None. Nigeria does not even have those vaccines to give and prevent cholera. So you wonder, okay. what are we spending money on? Okay. So, so, so we take mm. it back a little bit. Mm. Yes, you've talked about open defecation, defecation. and all. Um, and I'm so happy that you said uh, we should concentrate more on the you know, rural areas um, in terms of information dissemination and all of that. Tell us, what are the symptoms of cholera that the family members should watch out for? And how is it typically diagnosed? Is, this, is it first aid related? Is, you know, when they see these signs, there's something they can do on their own. Or is it as serious as you must rush the patient to the hospital? Uh, cholera is um, orophical disease. What's that? Okay, I will explain. You can only pick it when your food or your water is contaminated, your hand is contaminated. Yeah. Food, fruits, water, hands, contamination. And cholera actually you know, come from the feces, okay, from human waste, waste. human feces. Okay. Um, it's endemic in Nigeria, so that means that we have cholera all the time. Mm. So the first thing is that when the person, the right dose of the germs enter the mouth, it may feel some consumer symptoms. Oh, am I tired? Well, I'm not feeling well. But the first sign is diarrhea. Yeah. The person may not even run fever. The, the stool is classically watery and like rice water. You know, when you pour water, mm. you want to wash rice and then the, that kind of water, it's okay. pouring out. Then the second is vomiting. Mm. So, stooling, vomiting, abdominal cramps. Mm. Mm. So, in such a way that, um, you, you need two bowls. Those days when toilets were not available, you need two bowls. Mm. One to collect your vomiting and oh. one to collect two. Oh, that is scary. In the process, a lot of nutrients, a lot of water has been lost. Mm. Indeed, the body starts uh, cholera as an abnormal invasion in the guts and try to excrete it by that vomiting and stooling. Mm. But in the process of excreting it, you lose water. You lose so all you need to do is try to replace the water as much as possible. The body will finish its job. If you want to help the body with some antibiotics, you do. Then the body will finish its job and you'll be back. But if you don't replace the water, the body, all the cells uh, are gone. Well, we've had cholera came to Nigeria in 1972 for the first time. People that travel brought cholera. Mm. And up to 1991, we were good. After 91, we were seeing cholera every four years. But since about more than 10 years now, cholera is like an annual event it's like mm. every christmas every and now if we're not careful we'll see cholera twice Whoa. Okay. Um, and if you're having cholera this kind of thing simple thing treatable preventable um in a country that is want to be a mega country leader in in, in industry this and that and you cannot even provide water sanitation and hygiene mm. so what do you say we're doing mm. so um I, I don't know, you might be quite fortunate to stay in that part of Lagos, that part of this big dustbin that's a bit clean. Do you have water flowing? Can you run taps? I, I grew up in a, in a, in a rural community just very close to Ekwe, you know. Even at there, we go there, we, we open taps those days, and water comes out. So mm. There's nothing like that again. Nothing like mm. that. Nothing. Okay, okay. Wow. I'll, I'll, I'll again take you like a back back because we're building up like i said uh, now i want you to tell us what are some of the effective ways that families can prevent cholera in their homes and communities and are, are there specific actions that uh, they should take now um let's look at the individual because at the end of the day it has to it has to it starts from individual moves to family and mm, community. community um guys let us appreciate the fact that we owe a lot to make ourselves safe. The simple thing is that, you know, the personal hygiene, mm -hmm. okay, food hygiene, environmental hygiene, as an individual, think in that regard. Personal hygiene means that anytime you need to approach your food table, wash your hands, mm -hmm. soap and water, simple. Um, I understand that you may not have water. I understand that soap may be expensive. Okay, but try, wash your hand. 
Um, whenever you go out and you are coming in, before you enter your house, wash, wash your, hand. your hand. Simple principle. Hmm. Don't just enter the house and go and start putting ground up, put everything in your mouth, drinking water without washing your hand. Hmm. Go straight to where you can get water and soap and wash your hand. Hmm. Okay? Um, that is one aspect. Then, um, secondly, in terms of your water, keep your water safe. Um, I know that we buy a lot of sachet water because there's no water available. And you may have to run away from borehole water. If you have to drink any water that is good, mm. you, all you need to do exactly is to boil the water. Yes. I know gas is expensive. I know electricity is expensive. Mm -hmm. But there's what we call water guard that you can actually drop some inside your water that can kill the jam mm -hmm. and reduce the load of those jams before you drink. Mm -hmm. Now, look at your environment. I know that there are open gutters, where um, rain is bringing all sorts of things into your compound and near your house. You know, you are wading inside those water. Try as much as possible to limit your contact with those open surface water that is um, as a result of the rain, the flood as a result of the rain, and then ensure that you keep your environment clean. Mm. Uh, proper waste disposal. Yeah. is very, very key. Mm -hmm. We can't... Then, I, I think at the level of secondary school, we should go and, you know, um, put in front of this, each of the primary schools, for instance, a hand-washing mechanism. Yeah. Put a hand-washing mechanism there. Um, we should have ingrained this, this, this um, habit into the From children. From COVID. Um, I mean, this is... Wash like your hands. Wash your hands. You, you know, yeah. If you wash hands, you, you save a lot of things. Mm. Because, you know, and then, the, okay, you see the food vendors. They are roaming the street. They are still hanging by the roadside, selling food, fruits, and all those stuff. Again, if you cannot stop them, tell them the proper importance of ensuring that flies don't become their second neighbor. True. Somebody's going to consume. Wow. So if you look at the whole gamut, uh, it's a lot of gaps. And deeply, you know, running the gap is, a, is bad governance. Bad as you, as you speak, that. I'm just trying to, mm -hmm. you know, imagine myself on the streets of Lagos or any part of the country. And all of these things you present are the things that we are, you know, we, we encounter. Um, everybody is free to have a space to begin to sell whatsoever it is they want to sell, you know. And yes, you talked about um, personal hygiene, food hygiene and environmental, which means that no matter how you try your best, you know, to keep yourself safe from this, there's danger out there, mm. you know. So how can communities come together to fight the spread of cholera? You know, are there community-led initiatives that has been successful in the past that we can adapt at this point in time? Indeed. Um, I was a, a, quite a small boy in 1972. But still, I can still remember some of those um, uh, initiatives that... It, you, at that point, when there's an epidemic or pandemic, the community binds together. Okay. Now, um, government can support. Let me give you an example of uh, our journey to the river community of uh, Ekwe, uh, even yesterday. We were there to sensitize the community and tell them, where's your waste? You can't do this. Mm -hmm. Where's your water source? No. Get a clean bucket, okay? Put one cup on top of that clean bucket put water garden and use, and use that cup to boil water. You know, don't ever drink water overnight. We try to put those safety methods, and then can you wash your hand, put in front of your house a, two, a little bucket and small soap, and then wash your hand. Don't eat any fruit without proper washing. We, that is what, and then to implement that, of course, we have to ask the leaders in the community, the, the traditional leaders in the community and the youth leader, and the, actually one woman who came out forcibly to speak in support of us, that monitor. Nobody, if anybody dare, you know, go and advocate in the wrong place, mm. yes. let, us know. let us know. Now, key is that we have, also have to teach them the art of preparing oral solution. Okay. So that should anybody be stolen, mm. get this ready. No matter how much the student have permitted be putting in his mouth, let be drinking, mm. why you call for, for medical help attention. And try to assess mm -hmm. her. Now, that kind of um, activity at the community level ought to have been, you know, deepened and strengthened, mm -hmm. even for any health situation or health challenge. So, uh, for us, a lot can be done in the community. First of all, foremost, the cheapest thing is that 
health literacy, mm. where you educate people. Uh, because, um, uh, okay, John, we are all going to die, but we shouldn't be in hurry. <laughs> you know, there's no point. There's not. There's no any mansion anywhere you are going to pick. Yeah. Don't be in hurry. Mm. Stay here, you know, and <laughs> enjoy yourself. In you enjoy yourself and contribute, contribute to, to, yeah. to life. So, yes. simple thing, those jams, cholera, cholera came from where? The reservoir is in the India now, Bengal, Bangladesh. Okay. That is where the reservoir, all the eight pandemics that ran the whole world that has happened in history came from India. Yeah. We yeah. have not started. The pandemic, mm -hmm. this has become endemic in us now. Mm. That we are seeing sporadic every time okay. outbreak, outbreak, outbreak. What is wrong with our water, sanitation, and hygiene? Okay, so, doctor, I mean, a few times you've pointed at uh, the poor government. governance and you know, you know what. But you see, we had Ebola, the Lagos State government came and they did a maverick job on it. We had uh, COVID. COVID. COVID, they came and ah, they are. But now we have cholera, we expect them to... It's not Maybe that that's what is cholera happening. Cholera is endemic. It's not that we have cholera. Okay. The cholera is running it's always in, been it's, with it's, us. in the society. It's just when you see an outbreak, especially when it helps to disperse human waste into our water and food sources. Mm. That is when you see the outbreak. Mm. Okay? Yeah. We can explain that of um, COVID. Mm. We can explain that of Ebola. But cholera is not like that. Okay, if you keep having Lassa fever every time, cholera every time, meningitis every time, what, what do you think is the problem? What would you have the Lagos State Government do, you know, since it's endemic? It means that we won't wait. Provide uh -huh. water, ensure sanitation, you know, enforce your sanitation law, cover your gutters, take your waste. What, what, what is the big deal I about that? This, what is the big this, deal this about that? This question of water. Yes, we, water. we seem to be making so much noise about uh, electricity, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. How many homes have water direct from government? Listen, Nigeria has um, uh, 450 kilometers cube, cubic hmm. kilometer of surface water. I'm not talking about underground water. Underground, yeah. South Africa has just 49. Nigeria with four, that's times, close to times 10 of South Africa. Nigeria cannot provide water for people to drink. Oh, fellas sang it. Water of Dagan, water of Vaga, water in the air. No water. It's a 1990. <laughs> Even that 1990, we didn't get the water. We're now 2024. Provide water now. Ensure sanitation. Okay, guys, you, you, they are taking waste. Okay? It's okay. Strengthen the process of taking waste. There be, should be clear instruction how waste is evacuated. Mm. All the deaths, everything is inside the gutter. True. They will scoop those things and put on the road, and then they will help them bring it back. And they also, some people are selling uh, oranges, selling this thing, some people are cooking, and even selling rice. Decide those things. Mm. So, 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 what is the local government doing exactly? They are supposed to maintain sanitation, they are supposed to ensure that the gutters are clean. They are supposed to ensure that the food vendors have the requisite qualification and requisite environment to dispense food. Mm. Must we all, always live like this? Does that, does that not require WHO to come and tell us what to do? So I, I will always, you see, inequality is that, because when, you know, cholera is a disease of inequality. You can look at one single disease and be able to analyze the depth of governance yeah. in any country. Yeah. Okay? You know, it's a disease of inequality. It's a disease of poverty. You know, driven by malnutrition. Nigeria is like the headquarters of malnutrition. How many millions of people under man under undernourished? Mm -hmm. Children, 35 million severely malnourished. Jam will come and just ravage the human body now. What mm -hmm. what, what Jam is also want, wants to survive now. I see I see how passionate you are about all of this. So mm -hmm. so I guess we're getting ready to round up because the time is almost running out. Um, medical practitioners like you, are you having some kind of synergy? To be able to work with government because your primary assignment is to save lives that's why i see how concerned you are I, 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 okay, you know you can you can talk you are, most of the time doctors are really seen maybe some of us may be bold enough to come on tv and, and do everything the recommendation is very clear and it's quite because again politics drives everything unfortunately okay. politics drive everything your health initiative, your investment, your everything. Politics drive everything. And if we're saying that for the past 
for more than 100 years, they've not seen a single case of cholera in a place like uh, UK mm. or even in Germany. Mm. What are we copying from them? True. What are we copying from them? Do we, are we not copying how to get money or how to build houses? Those things, are, yes, comfortable houses, I agree. But the critical element of a comfortable house is provision of water and waste disposal. Yeah. Mm. Okay, look at the lucky corridor. You need to be on water to see how ugly the thing is. You, you think that you are, when you are on the road that you are driving, you feel happy. Go on water and see how ugly the whole, all sorts of dirt, oh, oh. abutting the water, mm. the place is, is... And I look at it that, we, you ask what funny corridor is this? And of course, you have seen a similar place, in, like in Staten Island, in New York. You know, that lonely place, mm. you go, you off, you go, you off. You know? And even at that corridor, um, after road silent. So... You ask yourself, is this a way to plan a city? And then when you enter Aja and enter all those places, eh, like Aja, Laji, and all those corner, corner, you wonder, is this way to live? Okay. All right, so, John. Well, Doctor, <laughs> the picture that you painted today is, is quite scary. Um, I, I wonder what, how, you will, how you will sum this up in one sentence. Going forward, what should we do? First and foremost, individual, protect yourself. Good. You have that power. If the government is not providing it for you, sure. protect yourself. Wash your hands. Keep your environment clean. Dispose your waste properly. And then put your voice. Tell government to provide water now. Okay, good. All right. And so that will be it. <laughs> <laughs> and we're putting our voices. You yes. know, this is a little that we can do. Yes. Um, letting you know out there that, you know, mm. the power is in your hand, first uh, of all. Yes. So just wash your hands and make sure that uh, your waste protect is disposed yourself properly yeah. and be careful what you eat mm. all right thank incredible. you doctor incredible insights incredible pleasure. insight doctor thank you. Thank you. thanks so much for sharing your experience and your expertise and your valuable time on handling this cholera outbreak as we have it right? okay so it's all said and done remember everyone as teaching time saves nine let's all take the necessary steps to protect ourselves and our families so up next, we have an exciting segment of Culture Conversations with Chizobam Ofebu. She'll be talking to Amanda Iheme about prioritizing the well-being of the next generation of creatives. Wow. Amanda Iheme is a remarkable individual, and we are looking forward to hearing her insights. Don't go away. We'll be right here after the timeout with Chizobam.